Human trafficking. You might think it's the type of crime that happens somewhere else, but in fact, it's closer to home than you think. In his book, The Berlin Turnpike, a true story of human trafficking in America, a multitude of dangers facing young people, adults, and families are exposed. Raymond Bouchard is an author, speaker, and human rights watchdog and joins me now. Welcome to Connecticut Style. It's great to have you here. Thank you, and thank you for having the courage to cover this topic. So right off the bat, the title, The Berlin Turnpike, mm. shocks me because, A, I drive down the Berlin Turnpike every morning, and I, I think if you're from Connecticut, you realize the CD hotels are still there and there's gentlemen clubs but human trafficking absolutely human trafficking more so now than ever before and you're right tens of thousands of cars drive the Berlin Turnpike and other highways like it throughout the United States every day mm -hmm. and we pass by things that we think are little gentlemen's clubs or CD motels there's over a thousand motel rooms on the Berlin Turnpike wow. and in the book I uh, cover a federal trial that took place in Hartford in 2007 in which one pimp bought two girls from another pimp for $600 each on the Berlin Turnpike in a motel. Uh, and there are pimps still? I, I thought this was again, like Again, more so than ever before. Wow. They don't have to hide anymore uh, on street corners. They don't have to operate uh, out of a brothel. Now they have the internet and cell phones. And because of the anonymity that that provides, uh, human trafficking. Most people see it as prostitution, uh, but we call it commercial sexual exploitation is exploding throughout the United States. And the reason I wrote this was to let people know the dangers that it happens now, mm -hmm. not only uh, in every city, but in every town. You know, we used to drive and think that we'd have to go someplace to go to a red light district in a city. Sure. That red light district has now come into each of our homes through the Internet. Well, I think that you mentioned that the term Berlin Turnpike is kind of taking on a new definition in your book. It really has, because it's really a metaphor, not only for these types of roadways throughout the United States, but, uh, but the Internet itself mm -hmm. and the proliferation of websites that offer young women for sale. We remember the Craigslist controversy uh, where they had their escort listings. Mm -hmm. Well, that has moved off of Craigslist and now really onto Facebook, onto and, uh, dozens, hundreds of other websites that blatantly offer women for sale here in Connecticut and throughout the United States. Wow. Uh, in your book, you talk about a character, Marie. Can you tell mm -hmm. us some of the details about her? Marie uh, is an extraordinary young woman, and she writes extensively about her experiences as a human trafficking victim here in Connecticut mm -hmm. and how she was recruited by a pimp uh, at a motel on the Berlin Turnpike. And the extraordinary power that these men have over these women. They're very intelligent, very charming, and he was able to recruit her so quickly that from the time he met her, put her on Craigslist, and her first date with a customer we call a John mm -hmm. was only four hours. Wow. So it's an extraordinary power they have over these women, especially if they have a previous um, uh, desire for drugs or problem you know with with getting along in life mm -hmm. there's a vulnerability there and they exploit that vulnerability well Raymond, let me ask you why why are the hotels still open why is this is this just something that's ignored people don't want to address it it, it sounds illegal to me well it's hidden uh, because uh, it, we drive by every day and there's so many wonderful and legitimate businesses on the Berlin Turnpike, mm -hmm. uh, more so than ever before. And, uh, you know, I grew up in Wethersfield. I love the Berlin Turnpike. Sure. I love Connecticut. And that's why I wanted to write this story. Uh, they're there. Sometimes they house uh, families that are down on their luck that, you know, through state aid. Mm -hmm. But many, many times you can go in, you can pay for these uh, motels uh, with cash anonymously and really they're hidden from the view from the road and anything can take place within them. They're very, very close to uh, this wealthy suburbanites who are often the customers of these girls. Mm -hmm. And it's not exclusive to the Berlin Turnpike. It's like this, you know, as I've traveled throughout the country, I'm sure as you have, you've seen these types of motels. They're right. called sometimes rubber mattress motels uh, throughout the United States. It's not the Berlin Turnpike, but they exist because simply there's a purpose for them. Wow. Well, let's talk about some of the myths surrounding human trafficking in America. And that's one of the difficulties we, uh, facing uh, this issue mm -hmm. and why, how people look at it in the United States. And one of the reasons I wrote the book, one of the myths is it simply doesn't happen here. Nothing could be further than the truth. The um, United States Department of State uh, says that the United States itself is a source and destination country for human trafficking of all kinds. Uh, but so not only with the misses it happens somewhere else, not here. 
it happens here in such a way that people don't believe. They mm -hmm. think that girls are smuggled in from other countries. Well, the vast majority of human trafficking victims in America are American girls. Another vi uh, uh, myth is that people think girls are kidnapped into this. And this is often makes the best headlines. It makes the best movie scripts. Sure. But the, the very the truth is that girls are recruited. They're wooed. They're romanced into this and by they a they go along with it? They, they don't fight it? They, they seem it, typically... in a. Uh, the majority of girls who are recruited into this have a history of early abuse in their life. This seems to open a door of vulnerability that, uh, that makes them open to being recruited. There is a wanting there. Mm -hmm. And when a man comes along who knows how to say the words she needs to hear, uh, says them to her over and over again, there's almost an addictive quality that happens between that girl and that pimp. And she really begins to believe that she cannot survive without him. Mm -hmm. And as such, we'll, we'll do anything he asks her to do. I see. Now, Raymond, is there anything we can do to, to address this problem or help with the situation? Well, hopefully reading the book sure. will, will be a start to real, having families become aware that this problem does exist in the United States here in Connecticut. Uh, closer than they think mm -hmm. and that will be able to begin to help them see the signs and, and in their uh, it, 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 within their own community um, there's a lot we can do awareness is number one mm -hmm. and we've also written a curriculum for junior high and high school students so that they can become aware much in the way that the dare program educates young people to uh, the dangers of drugs and bullying uh, this curriculum educates them to the dangers of commercial sexual exploitation because that age group is the target okay well Raymond thank you so much for addressing the issue and uh, letting us know about it. The name of the book again is The Berlin Turnpike, True Story of Human Trafficking in America. Coming up next, there's more Connecticut style after the break. Don't go anywhere.